Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the SCS Threshold application. SCS Threshold is a safety module to open after a network has been computed to evaluate the threshold limits, or maximum allowable safe voltages. And to plot the calculated values in different specified zones. It can also be opened as a standalone application. Unlike the safety module, which reports safety limits for both touch and step voltages in one shot, with SES threshold these quantities can be separated and analyzed individually. In this tutorial, getting started with SES threshold, I'm going to show you the general features of the application accessed from SES Results Viewer once the network is computed, and also how to open the application in standalone mode with an existing project, a new project, or a project linked to a database. I'll also present some panels in the list of options used in the interface. Let's explore SCS Threshold with an example. Suppose you have your example already open in SCS Results Viewer. SCS Threshold can then be opened from the ribbon or from the defined Safety Threshold group when the option Specify and Threshold module is selected. The SCS Threshold interface is organized in four panels. First, the Network Specifications panel at the top right defines the system-related characteristics like frequency, shock duration, and decrement factor, and these values will be the same for all defined zones. The Zone Viewer allows you to view the zone's configuration and provides buttons to show or hide the network and the profiles. Once you select a zone using the Zone Selector, all the safety specifications on the Zone Specification panel, such as the type of standard, surface layer resistivity, or any other characteristic, are displayed for this zone. These values can be modified. A convenient feature in SES Threshold is the possibility to exclude a region from the computations. The program identifies such a zone as an ignored zone. The status bar shows some useful information about the project file location and state, the type of associated F21 database, here we're working with HIFREC, and on the right side we can see any errors or issues that were found in the project. If you click on any of the links in this area, it will open the remaining issues list details. We'll close it for the moment. Let's go back to the Zone Viewer panel to define some zones. The button Define Custom Zones opens a Zones Drawing Editor where zones of any shape can be defined. Here I'm going to delete all the existing zones to redefine new ones. In the center of the network some special equipment has been erected on a crushed rock area. This deserves a special safety handling. Then in the left area of the substation we want to examine the touch voltage near the fence. And in the top area we want to assess the step voltage so we define specific zones accordingly. You can add as many zones as you need according to the safety requirements of your project. Click on OK to accept the changes. Returning now back to the SES Threshold main window, we can define safety criteria for the zones that we just defined. Here I'll go ahead and select some specifications, in more or less an arbitrary fashion, just for the demonstration purposes of this video tutorial. Our next step is to compute the corresponding thresholds. As we have selected to synchronize the zone definitions between the touch and step, the table of results will display thresholds for both touch and step quantities. Using these buttons, you can toggle the color scheme in the zone viewer such that it displays either the touch or step threshold values. You can also set it to display the zones that were defined by the user. Details on additional features available in SES Threshold will be presented in other videos to be made available soon. SES Threshold opened as a standalone application. We launched the application by double-clicking on its icon, easily identifiable by the electrical hazard symbol, from the tool subfolder of the SES software package. We could also launch it from the Tools tab of the CDEG's main interface. When SES Threshold is first started, you can either load an existing Threshold input file, or you can begin defining new zone specification parameters to compute the desired thresholds. When you click open, you'll have the option of viewing a list of recently accessed files. 
browsing your computer's folders, or selecting from a list of customized job IDs. And here it is possible to do a drag and drop operation. SCS Threshold essentially performs its analysis after an electrical system has been built and computed with an SCS module, such as HIFREC, MALT, or MALS. So you'll typically have one or more files available in an F21 database. An SCS Threshold will be able to extract information from these files, such as a network profile, parameters for the network's conductors, and soil resistivity data. The name assigned to the job ID in the SCS Threshold project will be the same as the related file in the F21 database. However, you do have the option of not linking to a database, in which case your project won't contain references to any electrical system or profile. In this case, every time you create a new project, it will be assigned a default name, which will include a sequence of digits representing the date of project creation, followed by a sequence of numbers that increase incrementally with each new project created. This concludes our introductory video for SCS Threshold. SCS welcomes any feedback you may wish to share regarding either our SCS Threshold application or this video. Thank you for watching.